Hey guys, this is Steph and John from flyatmikealpha.com. And today we are going to be doing an airplane comparison, comparing two airplanes, the 170B, Steph's airplane, and the airplane Stephanie learned to fly in, and the Bearhawk Patrol, what we have been flying around in, basically all fall and uh, spring, and now up here in Alaska. Steph and I brought that up on a 45-hour trip from Florida. From Florida. Uh, all the way up here to Alaska, where uh, the state bird is mosquitoes, <laughs> and they're out in full force right now. So I think it's about time for us to jump on the airplanes and start comparing. Sounds good. So how this is going to work is we're going to line up both airplanes on the runway, Stephanie in the 170, I will be in the Bearhawk, and you've got quite the payload today. You've got about... <clears throat> 2,100 pounds or so, what'd you say your gross weight is? Yeah, about that, uh, maybe 100 pounds less than the official gross weight of the airplane. Okay, so about 2,100 on the 170. Bearhawk's weighing in today at about 1,800 pounds. So we will get both these airplanes together on the runway. We will take off together, kind of in formation, sort of. Somebody's gonna pull out in front of the other one, probably. This is first test is going to be up to 1,000 feet. Who can get to 1,000 feet the fastest and also in the shortest distance over the ground, all right? Think VX, all right? We want to go up fast and at a steep angle. So, first test. One, go. So the Bearhawk came in here at just under 1,000 feet a minute, time to climb from zero feet up to 1,000, based on 25 squared at 500 feet. So pulling the power back to 25 squared from full power once we hit 500 feet AGL. Okay, I'm at 1,000. All right, so just about 20 seconds sooner and you're about, oh, I don't know, maybe, uh, what would you call that? Like. Uh, 100, 200 yards behind me? Yeah, something like that. The next test is slow flight. So how slow can you fly? We're going to find out. That is a great answer. So <laughs> slow flight test. Well, we are going to slow down both airplanes full flaps, and we're going to use power as necessary. Uh, coming in basically a power on stall, hanging it on the prop as slow as we can go. How slow can we make these airplanes fly? 49. You're at 49. This is about as slow as I can do it. Okay, let's see if I can get any slower here. About 48, 47, just about to the break. Okay, mine broke at 45. What do you break at? And the next thing, one thing that the Bearhawk does pretty well is go fast, all right? So it's slightly different than the 170. It's got a slightly shorter wingspan, 33 foot wingspan versus 36 feet of wing over there. So how fast can we go? How fast do you normally cruise at in the 170? I would say about 100 knots. Okay, about 100 knots, 115 miles an hour or so. And that's on what, about 10 gallons an hour or so? Yeah, about 23 squared. Okay, so we'll do this next test at 10 gallons an hour so it's equal across the board. Remember, 037 or 0370, 0360 Lycoming. Maybe someday. <laughs> yeah, 0360 Lycoming in that one, 0360 Lycoming in this one. They are both carbureted, 360 cubic inch, 180 horsepower engines. 
with an 80 inch Hartzell carbon trailblazer on the Bearhawk, 83 inch Hartzell carbon trailblazer on the 170. You like your new prop? Oh, it's great. <laughs> yeah. Actually. So uh, both really good propellers, uh, really same power plants. So how fast can we go at 10 gallons an hour on either of these airplanes? Okay, I'm at 10 gallons, 115 ground. Okay, let me get her dial back here. 120 ground now. Cool, I'm at 10.0, I'm doing 124 over the ground. How about you? 120. Still 10.0? Yep. Cool, I'm 10.0, 123 or so. Just slowly creeping up on you. And final test before the landing. That's going to be the fun part. Who can land shorter? There's a little bit of pilot skill ish involved in that one. Um, but also, obviously, the airplane makes a difference there too. So, next test is going to be power off glide. If you lose the engine on this thing, which one is going to glide better? Obviously, you would be thinking, you know, hey, we got a rather larger airplane, 2,100 pounds, 1,800 pounds on this guy. Pretty efficient wing, Harry Riblet wing on this guy. The uh, It's actually a 175 wing that you've got on there. Uh, so, we're going to get up to about 2,000 feet here, chop the power back to idle, let them come down with the props windmilling, see who descends faster at about 70 miles per hour. That's your best glide speed, right? Yeah, I would say so. Cool. <laughs> so uh, we'll come down here and we'll see who would be able to glide a little bit further than the other one, maybe make it to a gravel bar, make it to the beach, make it wherever, uh, make it back to the airport if you did lose the engine in flight. Pretty important. Yeah, kind of important. Okay, now. There's 1,000 for me, I'm going to go ahead and add power back in. I'm coming down about 900 to 1,000 feet a minute. And I'm at 1,000 now. All right, and final test here before we get totally devoured by mosquitoes. <laughs> you got one in your eyeball there. Yeah, I know. Uh, we are <laughs> going to go ahead and land these things. I will pop in here first, land. I will mark off my landing spot. Uh, we'll be using uh, jack loft strip there. Basically, uh, the, anything past the grass counts, right? So once we get onto the gravel, that's the start of the runway. And I'll throw out a marker. We'll see if you can land before that marker, maybe after that marker. We'll see how it goes. Sounds good. All right, I'm gonna get out of your way here and you'll see a yellow rag on the runway. Feel free to run over it. That is my stopping spot. Okay. All right, so to basically summarize all that, recap it all, basically we took off, the Bearhawk climbed a little faster than the 170. Better got performance. To, got to a thousand feet about 20 seconds sooner. Mm -hmm. And then we uh, had, for slow flight, about four miles an hour slower. And the Bearhawk. Yep, and then fast flight or cruise, basically 10 gallons an hour, 23 squared-ish, uh, about four miles an hour faster on the Bearhawk. Currently we've got about three uh, camera mounts exterior on the Bearhawk and the 170 one camera on the 170 yep and then you've got for your wing you've got the horton stole kit yep the wing tips the horton stole kit the wing fences and the uh, leading edge cuff is the other part of that right right so and then we've got the vgs on the bearhawk now that we've been playing around with so yeah the vgs basically made the stall speed two miles an hour slower also made the cruise speed about two miles an hour slower uh just shifted that flight envelope a little bit and then we had kind of the surprising one, which was for glide, the gliding. The 170 did better. <laughs> the 170 did a little bit better in the glide by about 100 feet a minute or so. Uh, shorter wing on the Bearhawk, 33 foot wingspan, 36 foot wingspan on the 170. Uh, a little bit more wing area on the 170, ever so slightly because of that stole kit. 
Um, that leading edge cuff sticks out a little bit more, so just ever so uh, slightly more square footage on the uh, 170, even though the Bearhawk has that super deep cord, 66 inches. Uh, so yeah, and then the landing, some pilotage involved in there, but also, I mean, basically landing as short as we could and maybe 250 feet or so for the Bearhawk. Yeah, maybe, maybe about 50 to 75 longer. For the 170? For the 170. Yeah, and I mean, again, 1,800 pounds loaded in the Bearhawk, 2,100 pounds in the 170. So think really, give me uh, give me which airplane you want. And you've got 100 hours in the Bearhawk, 1,000 hours in the 170, which one do you want? Well, they both have their purpose, and that's the thing. There's no perfect airplane. The Bearhawk's super fun, super fun to fly when it's light. It performs great. There are things that I'm looking for in an airplane that I find in the 170. It's got more forward visibility over the cowling, when I'm taxiing, when you're flaring the land. The Bearhawk's a little bit harder. It's a little to... more cub style, where you're not gonna have quite the same forward visibility. The cowling sticks up a little bit more. You can just see the profile of the airplane, how the cowling drops down on the 170, better forward visibility. Yeah. And, and the cowling's very straight out on the Bearhawk. And even with that, there's still more uh, prop clearance in the 170 it sits a little bit higher over the ground and so, so when we're in places like this where there's alder all over the place I feel a little bit better about being able to taxi around and the gear on the 170 is actually modded so that's a 180 180 gear yeah 180 gear uh so a little bit taller plus 29 inch bush wheels yeah and then the tail wheels are even a little bit taller as well uh so overall the fuselage is sitting a little bit higher above the ground than on the Bearhawk Again, just depends what you're going to do, right? You don't want super tall gear that weighs a lot more, that causes more aerodynamic drag if you're not going to places like this. Um, and this really isn't that bad. The strip here is pretty cool, but if you're going to places where you have a lot of brush all over the strip that's a foot high, or maybe two feet high, uh, you might do some lawn mowing while you're out there. <laughs> and speaking of gear, the width of the gear is a factor. The Bearhawk has slightly narrower gear. The 170 is wider. To me, there are certain instances where the wider gear really is beneficial as in a big crosswind or something like that. It just handles better on the ground. Yeah, so controllability wise, crosswind landing wise, uh, basically Bearhawk has, it's a slightly shorter fuselage, making it slightly faster, but a little shorter coupled airplane by just a few feet than the 170. Uh, so you have less rudder authority just because you have a shorter arm. You've got slightly smaller ailerons because if you're going really fast, you don't need all that aileron. The 170's got a lot more aileron than the Bearhawk yeah. and the rudder on the 170. Bigger rudder, I really feel like it has more rudder authority, more controllability. And it's a longer fuselage on the 170, giving you all that. And the trade-off, of course, is speed, efficiency, all of that. A lot of the things that they get in experimental airplanes like Kit Fox, Rands, Bearhawk, RVs, whatever. You know, you have an RV that does 200 miles an hour on the same engines we have in here. Well, they do it by trading the efficiency for some sort of stability and controllability. And I mean, there's no free lunch, right? You're gonna to have to give up some stability, some dihedral, some, some sort of something if you're going to gain speed and efficiency and all that. And speaking of stability and speed during cruise, the Bearhawk I found in those hours flying it, it did cruise faster. Yet when there is a lot of turbulence, moderate turbulence, you had to slow it way down where I feel that the 170 can handle turbulence a little bit better. The 170 weighs 250 pounds more than the Bearhawk empty. So with anything loaded in there, you're gonna have heavier wing loading per square foot on the 170. Any airplane with heavier wing loading is gonna ride a little smoother in turbulence. Lighter wing loading, it's gonna get tossed around a little bit more. And there's less things built into the Bearhawk as far as stability, like less dihedral, uh, and just a shorter overall fuselage, so you don't have the same stabilizing effect with those tail feathers of the vertical and horizontal stabilizer. So yeah, without that large vertical surface area and that vertical stabilizer extended back, well, you're gonna get into some turbulence, the airplane's gonna yaw a little bit more and wander a little bit more and require a little bit more stick and rudder input than the 170 might. And that's pretty much common across any experimental aircraft you fly. They have less dihedral. They typically require a little bit more control inputs. They're a little bit lighter on the controls, which is fun. Uh, how light it is on the controls and how snapping responsive yeah. it is. But those things that are in a 172, a 150, a 170, those things Cessna engineered into there that make them a little bit less efficient, also make them easier to fly. And that's why the 170, well, it's kind of, I mean, it's been a trainer for a long time. You learned to fly in it. Yeah. So really, I think the next thing to do is let's look inside the airplanes and compare what they have for interior space 
and just take a quick walk around each because numbers are just numbers, right? So let's see which airplane you really want for your mission. It's very mission specific. Very good. All right, so first up, the Bearhawk. We've got our G3X up there, JPI, some nice avionics, transponder radio, all that good stuff. And we've got our front seat, our back seat. The back seat removes super easy. Uh, so you can throw a whole lot more stuff in here. And then you have all that baggage area back there. So if you're going to be stacking this thing floor to ceiling, there is quite a bit of room. It is a lot wider than a Cub. You've almost got, well, two of Steph would fit into the back seat. Uh, the, since she's a little skinny there. <laughs> uh, and then back here, you've got a fairly large baggage door to load up a lot of stuff wide enough to fit at least two drones uh, back in there. And yeah, overall you can fit quite a bit of stuff, but it really involves removing that back seat if you wanna load a ton of stuff in here. And keep in mind, if you're gonna put two people in here, well, all of a sudden you're gonna be loading all your heavy gear in back, and now you're gonna have a pretty far aft CG. It does have a pretty good CG range because of course this thing's designed to be flown with two people and some gear in back, or a half a moose back there or something. You can definitely tell when it's loaded heavy in the back though. FCG definitely makes a difference with controllability and how stable it feels. Absolutely. It's way funner to fly it light. <laughs> when it's light it just performs like crazy uh, but it is not nose heavy but I would say without anything in back like I carried the firewood and all that other stuff out here uh, when we came to this little strip to camp in the far back because well it's designed to obviously have weight in back right so landing a strip like this if you have no weight in back and you got full flaps in there and you want to get on the brakes when you first touch down, it's a little bit on the nose heavy side. Um, so you definitely want to get rid of those flaps really quick and preferably have some weight in back to not be riding the front end of that CG envelope. Now talking, what fits into the 170? Well, let's take a look. We've got a tent, fat bikes, we've got food, our camping gear that uh, is all inside right now, but we've got pillows, sleeping bags, tent, jackets, clothes, all kinds of stuff in there. There is extended baggage <clears throat> on this one. So quite a bit of space inside here. And then as far as what we've got rocking for a panel on this guy, two G5s, the iPad, JPI, Garmin 430, uh, two radios, old transponder. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a roomier airplane the though. The transponder works fine. <laughs> transponder works great. Yeah, no EDSB on this one. Bearhawk does have Not EDSB yet, no. <laughs> so. Yeah, typically we can load the two fat bikes. All your camping gear, your food, clothes, pretty much everything you need, water, and two people in the 170. And the Bearhawk can totally load two fat bikes, a tent, sleeping bag, some camping gear, but you're not going to be carrying that second person. So no. as much as, uh, much as I love you. Um, you're going solo. It's going to be a solo <laughs> camping trip. Uh, so that is why uh, we could just get away with just taking the 170, but I like to fly too, so we often take two airplanes. And we can carry way more junk because, don't forget, we fly with um, lots of camera gear. And puppies. So bottom line, what... Oh, uh, there's a mosquito on my sunglasses. <laughs> so bottom line, what airplane is right for you? Well, yeah. You decide. I will stick with the 170. I like the Bearhawk right now. It's very <laughs> mission specific. It's what you want to be doing, uh, where you want to be going. The 170, yeah, good for 600 feet and up strips, I would say. Maybe 800 feet if you're really loaded fully to gross um, and you don't have any sort of wind to help you off. The Bearhawk, maybe good down to 400-ish feet, depending on how you're loaded, depending on wind, all that sort of stuff. Uh, so if you need really tight strips or you need to get into really tight strips, Bearhawk's a good consideration. Uh, if you want to go a little faster, a little slower, all that, Barox great airplane. Really is. Uh, the 170, really good also. And it's so, utility. It's what you want to carry. There's, yeah, for what we're doing for camping, there might be a little bit more utility if you're camping with two people. And if you're camping with one person, might be a little more utility in the Bearhawk. Also comfort inside the airplane. The Bearhawk gets really, really cold. It has no insulation. If you guys didn't notice inside there, there was no insulation in the Bearhawk. <laughs> which is just a weight savings thing. You could certainly add insulation to it. 12, 30 or so is the empty weight on the Bearhawk. So about 770 pound useful load technically, but a 700 pound useful load on the 170 with all the mods and all the stuff loaded in here. Give me your buy it now price. How much can I have? Uh, how much would I have into this airplane? Or what can I buy it for right now? Ah. This second, I'm going to write you a check. The dogs are going to write you a check. Fox 120. Track. 120 grand. Yeah. I can buy this airplane. All right. Somebody's going to buy it. 
better be careful. It's not really for sale. <laughs> no, the Bear Hog, there's a 2014 for sale right now for 140 grand on Barnstormers. So I would say, yeah, this one being a 2019, probably around the 150, 160 mark is realistically what it would go for. Um, so yeah, there you have it. That is, uh, that's your comparison between the 170 and the Bear Hawk. Any questions, you guys know what to do, leave in the comments below. You know what they need to do, right? You're gonna tell them? Like and subscribe. You gotta like and subscribe, that's right. And we will see you guys in the next airplane comparison video. If you video. can't fly every day, fly at mikealpha.com. <laughs>